Messiahs that you are waiting for, one of them is due to suffer, and the other one is due to bring about world peace. But why do you believe that you're waiting on two Messiahs? You see, in the book of Zechariah, it says that the Messiah that is to come, the branch that will come from his place and will build the temple of the Lord, he is to be both priest and a king, and that there will be peace between them. And so, it is according to your written scriptures that the Messiah is to be a priest and a king. And with every single priest that we have in the world, they usually offer a recompense for the people's sin. And when Yeshua came into this world, he offered up himself as a sacrifice for the sins of God's people. Three days later, he was resurrected from the dead. And he was seen by over 500 people, all his apostles that were Jewish. They all ate and drank with him, witnessed the death, burial, resurrection, and they all suffered and died for their testimony. They had absolutely nothing to gain by preaching to everybody that the Messiah was none other than God himself, and that he had come down from heaven in the person of Yeshua and suffered and died for the sins of God's people. And it was 40 days later that he ascended into heaven. And it was just like Elijah did. Elijah went up in a whirlwind and he was seen by Elisha. And when Elisha was plowing, he was plowing with 12 oxen. And when Yeshua ascended into heaven, just like Elijah did, he was seen by 12 disciples. So you see, it is according to your written that your Messiah will be a priest and a king. He ascended into heaven like Elijah, and it is written in the Psalmist that the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand, till I put your enemies under your feet. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. So your Lord that David is speaking to is a priest, which means that there is not going to be two And he will come again to fill in Daniel 7, 13 and 14 on the clouds of heaven. So your Messiah is one. And he is the Son of God. He is the arm of the Lord. You see, Israel is not the suffering servant in Isaiah 53. It says, Awake, awake, O arm of the Lord. Put on glory you who are from ancient of days. It was you that parted the Red Sea. It was you that slay Rahab. And it was you that wounded the dragon. And the arm of the Lord is the same as the suffering servant in Isaiah 53. It says, Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? See, we all like sheep have gone astray, each one to his own way. And so the Lord laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He is a priest and he came and he suffered for the sins of God's people. God is a holy God. And because of Adam's sin, the book of Isaiah tells us that all men are condemned. It says Israel is a transgressor from the womb. And so God spoke to you through the prophet Jeremiah and said that there will come a day when he would write his laws in your hearts. He would put them in your mind. He said in that day you need no man to teach you saying know the Lord as all would know him. And he told you through Ezekiel that he would take your stony heart, that he would give you a heart of flesh that he would put his Holy Spirit within you and be the one to enable you to walk in his ways. But before he can make a new covenant with you, just like he made the old one in the wilderness with the children of Israel through taking an animal, slaughtering it and covering, covering you with his blood, there had to be a blood atonement for your sin. And the blood of animals was not enough to reconcile you back to God. Once a year on Yom Kippur, the high priest would take an animal slaughter this animal and cover the people with its blood. This was to demonstrate to you that the way into the Holy of Holies had not yet been made. There had to be a greater sacrifice, a greater atonement for your sin. You see, God gave you the law through Moses and he writ the law on stone. He told you that under the new covenant, he was going to write the laws in your heart. He was going to give you the Holy Spirit and he was going to make you so your Messiah is a priest and a king. And under the new covenant, he is about circumcision of the heart. God writes his laws in your heart, he puts them in your minds, he gives you the Holy Spirit, and he is the one that then enables you to walk in his ways. So what is this new blood 
blood atonement for your sin. It tells you in Isaiah 53 that he would suffer for the sins of God's people, that the Lord made upon him the iniquity of us all, that we all like sheep have gone astray. Daniel tells you that your Messiah would come before the second temple was destroyed, that he would bring atonement for sin and everlasting righteousness, and that he would be cut off but not for himself. And your Messiah came down from heaven 2,000 years ago, suffered for the sins of God's people, was risen from the dead three days later, ascended into heaven on the 40th day, just like Elijah did, and he will come again on the clouds of heaven, and he will stand on the Mount of Olives, and he will go out to fight against Israel's enemies. Every word in the Tanakh is true. Even in the Torah, the Torah tells you that God is to send you a prophet like Moses, that he would write, that he would have God's name in himself. And if you didn't listen to him, God would never forgive your rebellion. God said that he did not choose the children of Israel because of their righteousness. It was because of the unrighteousness of the other nations. That's because Jews and Gentiles alike are sinners. If Adam say we all come from Adam and Eve. And it's because of Adam's sin that we are condemned. And so if you need a sin atonement for your sin, when the high priest would uh, take an animal and slaughter it and enter into the Holy of Holies, it was just once a year on Yom Kippur. But when Yeshua died on the cross for your sin, the curtain in the temple was torn in two. The whole world went dark that day for three hours. It is written in the book of Amos that the sun would go down, the earth would go black and the world would be mourning as one mourns for an only son. He tells you through the psalmist David that he will be to me my son. And if his sons transgress my laws, I will never, uh, I will visit their transgressions with the rod. You see, the Messiah is the son of God. And he came down 2,000 years ago to suffer for your sin. He did this for you. He is the only way in which you can be saved. He's the only one that can save you. He's the only one that can reconcile you back to God. You need a sin atonement for your sin. You need to be, you need deliverance. You need forgiveness of sin. You need to be reconciled back to God. And the only way in which you can do it is for Yeshua. Yeshua died on the cross for your sin, was buried and raised on the third day and if you believe this in your heart and you confess this with your mouth we will save you there is just one way to be saved whether you be Jew or Gentile God is one and this is not about religion or works of the law you see when Adam sinned in the garden it was just one sin that separated him from God and so God exiled him from the garden of Eden and then he took Abraham, who was one man, and he said, take your only begotten son who you love and sacrifice him. And God told Isaac that God himself would provide the lamb. And God himself was that lamb. You see, God came down 2,000 years ago in the person of Yeshua. It is written in Isaiah 53 that he would suffer for your sin. It is written that he is the one that parted the red sea and slave Rahab. It is written that God parted the Red Sea, God slayed Rahab. It is there in the Tanakh. Everything you need is written in your Bible. It shows you who your Messiah is. There is not going to be two. There are two comings. One Messiah, two comings. One where he suffers for your sin, and the other one is where he is, and when he's raised from the dead, and the other one is when he comes on the clouds of heaven to bring about world peace. Daniel tells you that there would be war until the time of the end. If the Messiah that you're waiting for was to come, it would be at the end of the ages. But Daniel also tells you that he comes before the second temple is destroyed and that he is cut off but not for himself and that he brings atonement for sin and everlasting righteousness. And if you read the book of Ezekiel, it says that God is the one that provides you with the tone of the sin. God is your saviour. God is your shepherd. You all like sheep have gone astray, but your shepherd came to save you. He is the only one that can save you free from your sin. 
You are a slave to your sin. You are born in sin. And that in order for you to receive the kingdom of God, you have to be born again. God spoke through Ezekiel and said that he would take your stony heart, that he would give you a heart of flesh, that he would put his Holy Spirit within you and then enable you to walk in his ways. Yeshua HaMashiach is your Messiah and he is alive. He is seated right now at the right hand of the Father. And if you choose to go astray, God warned you through Moses that he will never forgive your rebellion. Yeshua said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me. You cannot be saved through your works for keeping the law because you sin against God over and over again. And if it was one sin in the Garden of Eden that separated Adam from God, then how many times a day did you sin? And if God is holy, then how can he let you into heaven in your sinful state? And if he is righteous, then tell us, how can he judge us based on who told a big lie versus who, who told a little one when every person in the world is a sinner? There is none righteous, not one. Jews and Gentiles alike, we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And if he's a just God, then he must sentence us to the same faith. We are condemned, every human being. But Yeshua, he is our hope. He is our light in the dark. He came to set the captives free. He came to deliver us from our sin. He said that who the Son sets free is free indeed. He came to take us from the evil one out of the darkness and into the light. When you put your trust in Yeshua, He saves you. He changes you. He gives you a new heart. He puts His Holy Spirit within you and He reconciles you back to God. It is written that the Jews would reject their Messiah and so God would turn his attention to the Gentiles, that he would reveal himself to a nation that didn't ask for him. But this is only for a season. It is also written that God is not finished with his people yet. You see, the Gentiles, wait, the Jews were chosen first. And God preserved you for the ages so that he could bring about your Redeemer. It was through, he told you through the prophets that exactly what he was planning to do. Joseph, Moses, well, and David were a shadow of the Messiah. You see, Joseph was a man, he was favoured by his father. And his brothers were jealous of him. And so they sold him as a slave. And he was accused of something that he didn't do and put into prison with two men. And one of those men died, one got saved. And when he was released from the prison, he was elevated to Pharaoh's right hand. And Yeshua, he is favoured by God. He is God. And he was hated by the Jews. And he was accused of something he didn't do. And he was on the cross with two men. One got saved and the other didn't. Three days later, he was resurrected from the dead. He was then elevated to Father's right hand. It says, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. And it's just like Moses. The children of Israel, they were slaves. And so God sent them a redeemer. And he led them through the wilderness. And when Moses went up onto the mountain, the children of Israel rose up to play. And on that day, 3,000 people died. And when God made the covenant with the children of Israel, he took an animal, slaughtered it, covered the children in its blood. And before he set them free and delivered them from Egypt, he, cho he told Moses to take an animal, slaughter the animal, cover the doorpost in his blood. Everybody that was covered in his blood, God would pass over them. It was something much greater. You see, Yeshua is the Passover lamb. And he gave his life in our place. And every person that is covered in his blood, God passes over them from judgment to life. And on the day that Yeshua went up to heaven, he sent us the Holy Spirit. And on that day, 3,000 people got saved. We have a story, we have God's judgment with the children of Israel in the wilderness. They broke the covenant that God made with them when he took an animal and they slaughtered it. And he covered it in his blood and 3,000 died. But under the new covenant, when God sent the Holy Spirit, and it is written through the book of Isaiah that the people will continue.
continue to do bad until the Holy Spirit comes, 3,000 people got saved. You see, we have everything written in your Tanakh. It says through the prophet Zechariah that the day you look upon me, who you pierced, in that day all your sin will be forgiven. You cannot be saved from any other way except by God's grace. And it is through faith in the one that you pierced. It is by believing in Yeshua. If you believe that he is Lord, that he died on the cross for your sin, was buried and raised on the third day, he saves you. He changes you. He gives you a new heart. He puts his Holy Spirit within you. He is the only way of salvation. The only one that can save you. Yeshua is your Lord. He is your God. He is your Messiah. He came once to suffer for the sins of God's people. And he is going to come again on the clouds of heaven. And unless you believe in him, you will not be saved. You are condemned already for your sin. And the only way you can be born, saved is by being born again. When you believe in Yeshua, He takes your stony heart. He gives you a heart of flesh. He puts His Holy Spirit within you. He then enables you to walk in His ways. God bless you.